Okay, I'd like to go over my uh, basic intro to logic gates. Um, there are six main ones that I'm going to cover. Um, we'll just do this as quick as we can. So the first logic gate I'd like to talk about is the AND gate. Okay, so AND. Now, the symbol for this gate, if you just take the D and move it down, so there's the D for it, just put a line out and two lines coming in. So a logic gate uses two or more inputs and gives you one output. So, and these are just switches on or off, so it's, it's all digital, so ones or zeros. Alright, so let's make a little chart here. So, input one, input two, and the output. So there's four different possibilities. They could both be on, one, this one could be on, this one would be off, or that one off and that one on, or they could both be off. Now the AND condition means that, let's say we had two light switches to control a light. It means that both light switches number one and number two both have to be on to turn on the light. So if the light is on it's a one, if the light is, is off it's a zero. <clears throat> so if they are both on then the light would be on. If only one is on it's off, same thing here, off, and if they're both off then it's off. So that's how that one works. The next one is OR. Okay, now it looks very similar to AND. Basically, you just make it curved like that. That's the only difference. Kind of like a smiley, smiley face with the tongue sticking out. Um, so let's do a chart for this. The cool thing about logic gates is that they're really logical. So. So we have our input one, input two are out, and all of our different combinations. So or, just based on the name, so one or two can turn it on. So if they're both on, it's on still. If just one of them's on, it's on. Again, it's on. And uh, if they're both off, then it's off. The next one I'm going to show you is a little bit different. It's called a knot. Okay, so a knot gate um, is just basically a triangle, and there's only one in and one out. Basically, the knot is like it just reverses everything. It just means the opposite of what you just told it. So if you give it a one, it'll give you a zero. If you give it a zero, it'll give you a one. You know, when I was growing up, people would use the word not, you know, like, oh, that looks cool, not, you know, like that, like, meaning that what I just said, I actually meant the opposite of that. So it's kind of the same thing, but with electronics. So, I don't know if people use that anymore. So you have your input, so you're in and then you're out. So a one is a zero and a zero is a one. So that one's really easy. Okay, the next one um, is kind of a combination. So if uh, and and not uh, were to combine, let's say they had a kid, right? And they they named the kid Nand. Kind of combined their two names together and came up with that. And uh, this is what their kid looked like, okay, so we got this right here, and just add the, the little circle at the end of and, and there you have NAND. Okay, so let's draw a chart for that one. So your imp input one, input two, and then your output. One one zero zero one zero one zero. Okay, now 
let's say Nand was a troubled child, right? And Nand <clears throat> did everything opposite of and. So if and told it one, Nand would do the complete opposite. So basically it's sticking a not gate right at the end of the and. So whatever it would normally give you, it's just going to give you the opposite. So just think opposite of of and. So if it gives you a 1 here, it'd be a 0 here. If it gives you a 0, it'd be a 1. So that's pretty simple. The next one is, let's say we take OR and NOT and combine them together. And again, it's fairly logical. It would look kind of like that. Okay, so we have our NOR. Again, you just combine the two names, and it's fairly simple. Let's create a chart for that. So we have our first input, our second input, and then our out, 11001010. And so nor is the exact opposite of or. So everything or told nor to do, nor did the opposite. So if it said one, we have zero. If one, zero. One, zero. Zero, one. Okay. Alright, the next one um, is called an exclusive or, or an XOR or ZOR, whatever you want to call it. So, X OR. Okay, some, I call it ZOR, but some people tell me it's called an XOR or exclusive OR. So, I'll say all three just to cover every base. Alright, so. Now, what's the symbol for ZOR or exclusive OR? Um, let's pretend that um, OR became a, a bad guy, right? And decided to wear a mask. So, here's the mask over the face like this. So you just add a little extra curved line there. Okay, so it's like that. So it's just one extra line. Let's say it's a bad guy and wearing a mask. And so we have our input and our input two and our out again. One, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Now, this one is just a little bit different. So let's say X and it's exclusive. It only likes to be by it, when it, something's exclusive, it's you know not very many can be present. So it's you know you're exclusively invited. You're you're individually invited. So if more than one person is invited, then it's obviously not that exclusive. So that's not very exclusive. But you only, if you only have one there, then it is exclusive. So that one and that one are exclusive because only one. So it only likes to be, you know, one at a time. One input at a time. It can't handle more than that. Doesn't like to be with anybody else. It's a bad guy. He likes to be by himself. So, and if nothing's there, then that doesn't work either. You gotta have something to work. So, those are the uh, six main logic gates. So, ho hopefully that helps. A little bit of a story kind of helps uh, keep it in your mind. So, yeah, have fun with that.